Last year we did Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Been there, yeah. Gatlinburg, if you haven't been, it's an American Indian word. It means land of the couples that wear matching airbrush t-shirts. I don't know if that's accurate, but it's accurate, okay? And they always pick the same design. It's a silhouette of a much skinnier couple than the people who are wearing the t-shirts. And on the shirts, that couple, they are holding hands, confidently in love. Their feet are in the sand, they're underneath a palm tree, there's a rainbow sunset on what is clearly the ocean in the background. Then they write Gatlinburg across the top so that you know which of the islands in the Smoky Mountains that they visited, right? They're not, they're not smart people, okay? But it makes for great people watching. Now, I don't know if you like to people watch, uh, but uh, I'm a huge fan. It's free. You know, you just sit there with someone you love and talk about the folks walking by for a couple hours. And, uh, and Gatlinburg is prime pickings. I mean, I mean, get your camera ready. You're gonna see someone that you like enough to want to share them with others. And, uh, and I'd like to put this out there. If you ever take pictures when you people watch, please email them to me because my buddies and I trade them like they're baseball cards. It is, it's probably the most fun game I've ever played. I'll give you a couple tips if you think you might want to take pictures when you people watch. Number one, make sure that the flash and the sound on your phone are turned off. I know, sounds like a no-brainer, right? Guys, I've been doing this a long time. I messed up. I'm in line for security at the airport. I'm going this way, coming at me, gentleman. Hawaiian shirt, shaved face, but out of the top of his shirt was this. <laughs> Perm? I don't know if that's the right. A tuft? It was the brightest, whitest, bushiest chest hair I have ever seen in my life. I've seen white chest hair, okay? This was next level. It was teased, possibly bleached. He looked like a Build-A-Bear whose neck had been slit to send a message to the other Build-A-Bears to get it together because the numbers are low, right? And I knew if I didn't get a picture of him, I wasn't gonna be able to sleep that night. Now, here's the rub. I can't take a picture from this distance at this angle. No one's gonna appreciate how awesome this thing is. If I really want the likes, I gotta time it so that when he's passing by me, I can get that profile shot. Right, really give it some depth. Now to do this, it's a timing thing, so I have this face I make, which is basically, what? I'm just checking Twitter, even though my phone's kind of pointed in your general direction. <laughs> he stops right here, I hit the button, it's like, kick flash, I was like. <laughs> There's a Pokemon on your shoulder, sir. Could you please? I'm gonna get it. Please hold still. Oh, he jumped into your obnoxious chest hair. That stinks. Maybe next time. We'll get him next time. We'll get him at the layover. So be careful. The other tip is also very, uh, Obvious one, but it's what happened to me when I was in Gatlinburg, and that's to make sure you have a full battery, all right? If you're gonna spend a day, people watching picture taken, charge up. Because I'm in Gatlinburg, I'm on the main drag. If you've never been there, Gatlinburg is basically just one hill. It's just, just one street, you know, with museums. Um, I mean, that's their word, not mine. I mean, call me old fashioned, but I just feel like if Cooter, the tow truck driver from the Dukes of Hazard, is the only face I can see on the front of your building, you're not allowed to call it a museum, okay? I don't care what's inside. They got a lot of gift shops. And then my favorite place to people watch in any tourist town, but especially Gatlinburg, is the old fashioned candy kitchen. I love that place so much, because no matter what time of day you walk up, you're gonna see the same thing. 
There's going to be a hillbilly pressed up against the window who cannot figure out how they're making taffy on the other side of the window, and it is the greatest thing they've ever seen. They're like, get out of here. No. -uh. Hey, come look. It's where they make it. The taffy from Cracker Barrel. Yeah, it all comes from... I don't know how they do it, even though I can see the whole process from right here. Just stand there, hours. And I saw her a block away, dude. The Mickey Mantle rookie card of people watching. I got so excited, I was like, oh, I've heard about you. Oh, oh, you are coming home with me. Easy, girl. Easy, girl. I'm not gonna hurt you. I got close enough, I pressed the button, nothing happened, I just pressed it again. Dead battery sign, what? No! I scared her, she ran back into Ripley's, believe it or not. <laughs> believe it or not. And I just sat down on the bench right there in between the Pancake Pantry and Fanny Farkle's Arcade. I was so mad. All this time I tracked her, I just let her get away. I wish I could pass my phone around and let you guys see how awesome she was, but I can't because I was careless. <laughs> so I'll just describe her as best I can. She had early 1990s hair. Remember that look? Pulled back tight in a ponytail, but in the front? <laughs> guys, you remember that look? I don't know if you ever saw how those got made. I showed up too early for prom one year, haven't slept a full night since. That <laughs> haunts me. I'll never forget, I walk through the back door, corsage in hand, she's just standing there in front of the big mirror. This lady in Gallenberg, I don't know how else to describe. She looked like someone who might frequent a Long John Silver's slash Kentucky Fried Chicken, like a two-in-one fast food restaurant. I don't know if you guys ever go to those, but there's good people watching in there too. Um, so any of them, I don't care what the combo is. For some reason, the average redneck brain can't seem to process that there are two businesses operating behind one counter and sharing the menu above. And the first time they see it, it just catches them off guard. They're like, okay, could I get a... <laughs> okay, do I need to be at this register if I want chicken? I just, is this like a food court or something? It's the same company. I can order off of both of them. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> uh, well, I'm getting a family meal deal. I get two sides. Could I get a side from this side and then a side from that side? Like if I could hurry up and decide, could I go from side to side for my sides? <laughs> I can, I wanna try that, okay. Um, well, extra biscuits. I mean, I knew that before I came in here. And <laughs> what does Long John Silver's have? Hush puppies, what? Can I do that? Two breads? Oh yeah, look it up. <laughs> I know it sounds like I'm really exaggerating for the sake of stand-up comedy, but it's not as much as you think, okay? <laughs> I promise if you go to any two-in-one fast food restaurant and just grab a seat close to the register, just within earshot, within five minutes, you'll hear some trucker spit out a sentence that has never been formed in the history of words. <laughs> because he's buckling under the pressure of the line that's now foreign behind him. He's like, oh God, I'm sorry, you guys. I just, I hadn't even thought about tacos and then I come in here and boom, right there they are next to the pizza. <laughs> but if you can make wherever you go, half of it Long John Silver's, like that's where you're gonna have the best time, all right? 
At any Long John Silver's, you will hear a grown man ask for extra crumbs, which is a new low for our society. <laughs> and really racist humans. Now, if I've completely lost you, Long John Silver's, it's a fast food seafood restaurant. And what they do is, is they take chicken and fish and they dip it in their batter. And then they put it in the deep fryer. And when they flip it from the deep fryer, little pieces of that batter break off. And then a pile of those little pieces form. And then people go, hey, can I get a scoop of the thing that, right there, I want some of that stuff, like the garbage on the bottom. I want some of it, like, put some of that into my treasure chest. They get all, and I was like, did that guy just ask for more crumbs? Like, I thought I might have misheard, right? She pushes a button on the register, boop, crumbs, 10 cents. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. How often does this happen? Okay, seriously. Like, I thought I could be witnessing the first time in the history of Long John Silver's where some guy was like, listen, this is gonna sound a little crazy, but I'm a little short on cash and I have a long drive ahead of me. Could you maybe just put some of that stuff into a cup? I could snack on it while I'm on the road. I don't know. No, people. It happens so much that it has been programmed into the register. And if that's the case, right? If whatever you call that stuff has its own button, which I'm pretty sure we can all agree was not in the original business plan. <laughs> that tells me that there was a day somewhere that it went down, right? <laughs> and as a professional people watcher, I'm just mad I wasn't there to see it. <laughs> you know, cause I just picture some toothless manager storming out of the back. Hey, somebody's gonna have to start paying for these crunchies, all right? I can't be giving this stuff away all day. <laughs> If everybody's going to ask for it, we got to figure something out. <laughs> Let's just be honest. Y'all love free stuff. That's what it is, ain't it? Yeah, it is. That's why we had to get rid of our tartar sauce pump and switch to packets, put them behind the counter, limit two per customer, because y'all were pumping it right into your boats. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Nobody needs that much tartar sauce. And I'm sick of dealing with it. And he tries to slam the door, but it's that metal kitchen door, right? So just... Ten minutes later, no one's speaking because you can still hear him in the back ticked off. I ain't selling down, Tommy. I'm sick of this. They don't pay me enough to put up with this. I'm so mad my hand's shaking. I'm supposed to bowl tonight. Now what? I'm done. Well, I don't care if I said it before. I mean it this time. You watch. As soon as I can afford that lift kit and them Luke Bryan tickets, you ain't never going to see me again. I'm out. Well, of course I'm going. Florida, Georgia line's open and I ain't going to miss that. They're the only dudes that can settle me down right now. You do that for me? All right, you take the Nelly part. You make me wanna roll my window. Okay, listen. Obviously, I've thought way too much about a day that probably never happened, okay? I'll give you that. But I have questions and I want them answered. And the only people that can answer them are those in charge at the Yum! Brands. If you're not familiar with who they are, Pizza Hut, Taco Bell, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Long John Silver's, A&W Root Beer. Now I don't know what they're on, but they're on something, okay? All their ideas, whether it's for the restaurant, the two-in-one fast food concept itself, I feel like they just get together in a big room. Hey, hey Carl, you got anything? Um, there have been several occasions where I was like, I want fried chicken and pizza at the same time, but probably was not in a, in a, st a stable position to drive two separate places. <laughs> could we do something about that? Yeah, I think we could do something about that. We could probably sell both of those here, right? Yeah. All right, we can put that down, save some money on rent. Phil, what do you guys got? Okay, we're representing Pizza Hut, and um, you know the doughy part around the outside of the pizza? The crust? The crust, dude. I told you it was called the crust. <laughs> what if, and I'm just spitballing here, we remove the crust and replace it with a ring of soft pretzel, pigs in a blanket, and if we can't do that, could we just fill it with cheese? Well, we can certainly look into one of those, if not all of them. I think those are all good ideas our audience would certainly enjoy. Uh, Ricky, what about you? 
I've always wanted to make taco shells out of Doritos. That's what I'm talking about. That needs to be, put that down first. We gotta figure that one out first. Maybe the greatest idea that's ever come out of these summits. We'll start with nacho cheese, Cool Ranch in the fourth quarter. People love little red and green flecks on their taco shells at Christmas. I love it, I love everything I'm hearing. 